Hi everyone, it's Louise Wilson, Chief Marketing Officer, and I'm here today with Tanya Dedeka for an episode of Talent Trailblazer TV. Tanya is our leading global life sciences expert, and we're really excited to talk to her all around, you know, what are the latest talent challenges, uh, brand impacts that are really facing the uh, life sciences sector today, and how can employers in this sector really look to try and get ahead of competition, not only competition in their own sector, but also competition that we have for talent right across all sectors today. So welcome to this episode, Tanya. Can't wait to have a chat. Well, uh, thank you. Very happy to be here. Thanks, Tanya. So let's get started with the first question. So Tanya, we're really seeing that the life sciences, pharma and medical device and healthcare industries are undergoing huge transformations because of digitalization, genomics and personalized me medicine. How are these trends really affecting the demand for talent today? Yeah, it's a very good question. And first of all, we see that the sector is, of course, influenced by two major trends. Uh, one is uh, the growth. Uh, they're still experiencing a growth of 5.4%, which is big. And the other one is, of course, the trend also of the aging population. Uh, one in three is older than 50, if you analyze the workforce of these pharmaceutical companies. And for example, if you take the average age of a PhD, today that is 48 years old. Well, I would say a couple of years ago, that was only 40. Now, indeed, we have done some talent trends reports and we've seen that 80% of our talent leaders are truly worried about the baby boomers retiring and the impact that that will have on their organization. And then secondly, like you rightfully said, we also see important changes coming with the new diagnostics and therapies and new cures uh, um, based on the human DNA. And that will account for most of their growth in their sector. And that will bring an additional challenge when it comes to recruiting people who have that type of knowledge and expertise, such as uh, immunology and uh, hematology. That's going to be a really big challenge. Uh, on the other hand side, we also see that the traditional roles, such as clinical study managers, research associates and regulatory managers, will continue to be in high demand. And these emerging skills will be difficult to find uh, for the future anyway. Tanya, I find it such an interesting sector. And when you talk about the aging population in the workforce, I think that becomes even more extreme because actually today, Generation Y is now the largest population of workers in the workforce globally. So this is a sector that really does need to have a look at how they're going to uh, approach this skills crunch and really create um, attractive employer propositions to, to really attract Generation Y talent. So I think that's going to be really, really top trend for us to stay on top of. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. Tanya, there really continues to be a shortage of STEM talent and the situation is worsening across the world. How can companies in the life science and healthcare sector better position themselves to build talent pipelines, not only to really focus on the skills they need now, but also to build for their future? Yeah, indeed. Uh, we now see that life sciences and healthcare companies face a very fierce competition for these STEM uh, uh, profiles and only from all, all their peers companies, but also from in from outside their industry. So they need to start recruiting more aggressively for these profiles. And one of the best examples that I've seen uh, comes from the medical device companies, where we see how they are focusing on a better patient experience with people using their products or their devices. And as such, they try to connect with candidates and create awareness for their brand. Um, and on the other hand side, we see tech companies now also investing into the healthcare space with, you know, you know the, the, the smartwatch that has the electrocardiogram ability. So we see indeed that this competition is really, uh, really very fierce for these type of profiles, absolutely. Tanya, I think it's really interesting when you uh, think about what you just mentioned in relation to competition for talent and how new competitors are really entering uh, the market to compete with the life sciences companies that have been focused on life sciences. And we are seeing many traditional technology companies also entering the space, like you mentioned. So, you know, how can life sciences companies better project an employer brand that communicates that they're entrepreneurial, they value innovation, and they're looking to define cutting edge projects that is going to attract and engage the right talent that they need for today and the future. 
Yeah, it's again a very good question and very uh, hot topic. Uh, brand awareness has, of course, always been a big topic in life sciences for the main reason that the consumers know the product that they are using, their medicine or the brand name of their toothpaste or their skincare products. But they are not always aware of the company who is producing these products. And this is the company that needs the people. So one of our uh, reports, our talent trends reports, is showing that 63% of the life sciences and healthcare companies are increasing their investments into their employer brand to bring more brand awareness to the market and are hiring uh, employer brand experts to develop their branding strategy in relation to the recruitment. Um, we have seen some great examples of some companies increasing their logos on the boxes of their products so that people really become aware of their logo instead of the brand name of their product. Um, now, what we also see next to these employer brand investments is we notice an increase focused on the candidate experience. These pharmaceutical companies are highly attractive, so they do attract big numbers of candidates, but they can only hire a certain number. So what they are trying to do is they are trying to make that candidate process as transparent as possible and make the ex experience as positive as possible so that when the candidate gets a no at the end of the, of the process, that at least the experience was a positive one. So this is something that we are seeing. It's interesting when you think about that tenure, it is uh, such a consumer-led market at the end of the day when you think about where all the products are uh, really uh, focused in terms of human health as well as uh, medical and healthcare and sciences. So I think we're seeing that as a trend moving forward where your candidate experience has to really align with and support your consumer experience to ensure, like you said, that level of positive experience has an impact on, you know, the, the products they, they buy at the end of the day. So I think that's a huge investment. And I believe that the life sciences sector is a sector that is investing uh, some of the most in their employer brand strategy to really create this um, engaging brand for talent. So I look forward to seeing how that develops across the yeah, year. And, and I like this evolution because every candidate is a consumer. And in mm -hmm. fact, every consumer is a candidate. And I think if you become aware of that, your attitude changes towards your candidates and making a candidate wait for an additional six weeks before they receive any reply on, on, their, uh, on, on what they are doing, then this is just not positive. Then this is just not possible anymore in this sector. Tanya, when you think about the talent challenges in the life sciences sector that you mentioned, this real focus on building their employer brand and their candidate experience, we are seeing some real pioneers come out of the life science and healthcare sector that are investing in a total talent approach and actually taking a leadership role across sectors to where they can look at how do they break down traditional silos of permanent and contingent talent to create an aligned workforce strategy that meets the goals of the business. So, you know, tell me a little bit more, how can such an approach support their overall talent strategy and deliver a competitive advantage where all of the leaders that are taking this pioneering role in total talent can provide greater value to the business. Yeah, it's of course the scarcity of talent that is making these companies rethink their talent strategy. Honestly, they are being forced, especially if you think again around the STEM profiles, you have to review your talent strategy. Yeah? Uh, companies need to become way more careful in the way that they are using their recruitment channels and not have any waste. Uh, so today we see, and then, yeah, that's an addition, we see that 46% of the life sciences and healthcare companies are also expecting that contingent workers will increase. So first of all, you would have the scarcity of talent. You see an increase of contingent, uh, sometimes up to 30% of their workforce. Uh, uh, some even think it could be higher than 40%. Um, so we have, we have seen that these life sciences leaders are really truly reviewing their talent strategy and bringing indeed perm and contingent uh, in the same model. Um, it's by using those recruitment channels more optimal and bringing down the silos that synergies will start to grow. And I think this is where the more blended workforce with a bigger focus on agility will create a much larger talent pool. Because what is the reason of the total talent approach is that you will have a much larger talent pool. And it is the candidate who will decide what type of contract or in what way he will work for you. He can be a freelancer, he can be a contingent worker, or he can have a perm contract. But we see that completely uh, changing. We've also seen that um, 
most of the leaders are truly asking themselves, do we still have the right talent strategy in a sense of moving forward? If you think about, uh, um, the, you know, the contingent part growing, then you have to rethink immediately, okay, who is going to be my partner and how can I future-proof my company uh, by fine-tuning this workforce strategy and leveraging the flexible talent? And um, I think that's the most important thing. So I'm a big, big fan of uh, total talent because I see the companies that are doing it are really having great results um, but okay it's a it's a, it's a hard job because you need to get your you need to have your talent acquisition company uh, leaders on board they need to be able to think with you in that strategy in that way uh, in order to bring uh, uh, um, these models really to life yeah, Tanya, I like to say that total talent is not something that you can really turn on overnight. It is yeah. a journey where you'll bring your HR and talent acquisition together with your procurement, um, aligned with your uh, business executives to see where and how can you create the strategy to impact where and how the business needs to grow and really optimise performance across the board. So I always like to say that it's, it's not something you can turn on overnight, it is a journey. Um, Tanya, if we were to think about everything you've said, you know, we are seeing a, a sector that is facing quite a lot of skills crunch and talent challenges. We have a focus on building the brand and the candidate experience to really drive quality experience and outcomes for any candidate that touches their business, whether they're successful or not. And at the same time, we're looking at new models and how you can engage talent and really drive agility in your workforce. So tell me, if you had to um, give any HR leader or talent acquisition leader uh, watching this video today three top tips of advice on how to get through and approach this uh, really dynamic sector what are your three top tips i would absolutely advise them to fine-tune their workforce strategy uh, by uh, by leveraging the uh, flexible talent absolutely continue to invest into employer brand and candidate experience and then of course work with the right external partner who has the knowledge so that you are able to build together this fluid and agile organization and workforce Great. Thank you so much, Tanya. I know that we've got a full in-depth report on Talent Trends Report on the life sciences sector. So that's available to everyone watching today. And, uh, you know, if you have any uh, questions or uh, advice that you'd like to seek out, um, Tanya's more than available. Thanks so much, Tanya. Thank you very much.